Well, we'll just uh, invite Ross and Manzurul up, and uh, Ross is going to share with us a number of different things uh, about the lending environment and what's happening with the banks, and Manzurul is going to give us a little bit of experience as well and comment on a couple of different things. So, gentlemen. So what a time in uh, the finance market at the moment. It's, uh, you know, there's never been so many factors that have been affecting the finance market. And I was looking at, you know, presenting this talk tonight and I was just, you know, I'm confused. So I imagine, you know, what you guys are thinking because I was just writing down a number and, you know, so you've got APRA and ASIC changes, you've got tighter borrowing regulations, you've got interest only um, you know, the caps um, that the banks have. You've got, cap, you know, increased capital requirements by the lending. You've got, you know, things happening with the global markets and, you know, the US dollar and what's happening with oil and stuff like that, which is affecting, um, you know, bond rates and so forth, um, which flows through to us from an interest rate perspective. You've got, you know, out of cycle rate rises and changes. You've got, you know, looking at, a massive difference now between fixed rates and variable rates. You've got comprehensive credit reporting coming in. You've got living expenses being you know, really looked at really difficultly um, by the banks. You know things like investment property expenses that wasn't a big thing um, you know, 12, 18 months ago is now something that they're really cracking down on. You know, foreign lending rules have changed. Self-managed super fund uh, banks have been pulling out of that. There's talks of, you know, with the change in government and politics that, um, you know, negative gearing and, and so forth. We've, we've every day, and Scott tapped on a lot of um, the articles around the housing bubble and what's happening in, in that. You've got, you know, people's this interest only cliff uh, people are talking about in the last three years. You've got, um, you know, reports of banks calling in loans and line of credit. So, you know, out of all that, how, how do we make sense of it all? How do we make sense of it all? And, you know, how do we cut through the noise and, and come up with our own strategies? And I guess that's what we want to do tonight is sort of bring it back to, yes, there is a lot of noise, but it, what it comes down to is it comes down to you. It comes down to you and your individual circumstance. And what are the actions that you can do to, you know, to see how you can go through that? Is that a fair comment? Absolutely. And Ross, I suppose, is that all we've been hearing for the last about 15, 20 minutes is a lot of doom and gloom. That's all mm. we've been hearing, right? We went through all of those slides and I was waiting for one slide with a sort of a slight increase mm. on the growth or something <laughs> positive. And we haven't seen it. So I suppose the question that I sort of ask is that how is it different is it different from the previous cycle or any other cycle? And is it that the world sort of collapse or is it just the time in the longer period of time as such? Yeah, so, I mean, if you look at what happens typically in, uh, in, in the market once a market slows, and you know, to take the noise out of, you know, Scott had a lot of recent figures there, but the figures that he didn't show is, well, what has happened to property over the last 10 years? You look at somewhere like Sydney and Melbourne, you know, 70% plus increases. So if the market comes off, you know, 10 or even 20%, you know, the, the growth in the last 10 years is still a reasonable number in terms of, and yeah, that gets missed because the headlines don't like to say how much money people have made out of property. It, it, it focuses on, you know, what's happening in the market today. And, you know, I know we were talking that we expected Sydney uh, and Melbourne to slow down, you know, probably 18 months, two years ago, and it probably went an extra year of 17% that we didn't think was going to actually happen. And we're like, wow, it's, it's actually still going. And a lot of us stopped investing in Sydney because we're like, you know, it's, it's not actually going to continue to increase in value. But guess what? It did. And so now, you know, there's a lot of hype around that, uh, the actual market I think, coming I off. I think I suppose, Ross, to reiterate that point is that uh, the property market is for a longer period of time. And many mm. of those statistics, as you say, is over the last six months, 12 months, if we look back into the previous sort of the cycle as mm. such, we've seen the same thing back in 2003 as an example. The market was right at its peak mm. in, in, say, New South Wales at that point in time. Mm. I remember that in 2002, 2001, I thought the price was very well priced. 
and in 2002, 2003, I couldn't see any logic why the market was still progressing at that stage. And it did. And it did go down. And it did settle. And it did sort of increase over time again. Exactly. And you know, you, you look at what happens and a lot of it is, is driven by that sort of fear and greed and the greed on the behalf of the seller that, oh, I still want to get the price that I could get six months ago. The, the buyer comes in and says, well, I'm not going to pay you, you know, that because I know I'm reading these reports, I'm reading the headlines, the market's not going there. So there's a, stand, a standoff and then the, the, the guy who's put his price, you know, the, the high price on his property goes, oh, I need to sell this, I'm going to take. And then so he takes a lesser price, price comes down. But there's a period of time where there's a standoff. And even so with that standoff, everything slows down, as you saw through, you know, from Scott's um, sales, because that person can't sell, which means he can't buy. He's not getting the valuation, so he can't get the equity to buy the next property. So a drop in property just slows the whole cycle down in terms of the actual and you know, from a funding requirements, I think the difference that we're seeing in, in this particular market, to answer your question, is that there's other factors at play, as, as I've mentioned, in terms of that haven't been there, in terms of the, um, which is more the government regulations. Normally how a market historically slows down is by raising interest rates, and then the market slows down. In this case, it's been through government regulation. It's been through... APRA and ASIC and slowing down the actual property market. So it's slightly different in that.